This first poem is called The Snarkadelic Wordsmith Meets the Penguin Whisperer. <laughs> Standing in the dark haze of the alleyway, every breath sends a chilly fog into the night. The stars long since blotted out of the sky by manufactured neon bulbs flickering in their inconsistent rhythms like an erratic heartbeat. Spooked by unknown sounds and thoughts, unchained in incessant regurgitation, lying awake at night between consciousness and dreaming, the mind rambles on like the city streets, never failing in their constant symphony of horns, the cries of those wandering souls long since forgotten by the society that claims to care, the politicians, photo ops, guilt-driven good deeds, the jaded jerks with their assumptions of panhandling no goodniks, passing by in their $2,400 suits and brightly shining shoes, never giving a second thought to the down and out. Sleep is a luxury in these days of 24-hour shifts, electric suns destroying rhythms here since before time, machines built without off buttons are clicking around the clock, coffee cups are overflowing endless refills of a caffeinated generation, walking past art and beauty in a haste, a waste, laser focused on problems man-made and trivial, while eyes grow beat red, dead tired, and a race to see what machinery will wear down its rusted elements, in a final cry of acquiescence, its bones and bolts no longer fit to serve, taxis screaming down the street in a hurried impatience, as I glance towards the calm dance of a paper bag flying in the wind, the ever-present ticking of the silver-encrusted pocket watch hanging from the stranger's trench coat shakes me from my dream. Here, he has delivered, in simple whisper, the keys that unlock that next lexicon, destined to pass from wide, weary fingers onto simple paper. As if on a movable cue by some divine puppetry, my reluctant muse, the penguin, disappears into the night, leaving this wordsmith waiting once again. Hmm. This next one is called Orion. Orion, oh Orion, my faithful companion, favorite constellation. I gazed at you lying in Oklahoma gutters as a child lazing in the back seat of a car amid the farmland highways of Texas, on journeys here and there and far, from the mountains of New Mexico to wandering wine country roads, peeking beneath the wintry clouds, quiet and humble, drunk and loud, you remain a twilight guardian to this old soul since a young one. In the clear, crisp night you remain, and I know I shall upon thee gaze again. Your starry belt and hourglass figure, as you fight the night with rigor, I suppose with my given name, Diana, it was so faded that for me your stars would shine the greatest. As I wander this earth, it seems there you're waiting. Yeah. This next one goes out to all the folks who have this friend who constantly asks them for advice. <laughs> it's called Occupational Hazards. You wouldn't ask an interior designer to be a coal miner. You wouldn't ask a birthday clown to save you when you drown. You wouldn't ask a car mechanic to operate on you when you get sick. You wouldn't ask your electrician to be your child's pediatrician. You wouldn't ask your fitness trainer to fly you in an airplane, sir. You wouldn't ask a three-year-old to light your furnace when it gets cold. You wouldn't ask a lyricist to be your pharmacist. <laughs> you wouldn't ask your mayor to act as your tailor. You wouldn't ask an archaeologist to be your neurologist. You wouldn't ask a mediator to come repair your radiator. So don't ask this wordsmith to be your therapist. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> this next one is called The Seven Words You Cannot Say in a Free Country, and it's inspired by the CDC, which was trying to yes. censor its employees. <laughs> by the time the blank had grown into a teenager, they learned that being blank is both blank and blank, a natural part of human blank. And therefore, they began advocating for their legal blank in what they were taught to believe was a nation that would never ever censor the only word that accurately described their identity. 
They would not allow feeling blank to keep them from protesting as long as they were able. This next one I wrote after the shooting in Pittsburgh. It's called A World Without Bullets. You say to yourself, reading the newspapers, that that could have been me. We must not let it change us for the worse. We must not hide ourselves from the beauty that life has to offer. We must not allow fear to stop us from getting an education, worshiping in our sanctuaries, enjoying live music, watching films upon the big screen, dancing the night away, working in our professions, eating out at restaurants, hanging out at the local mall, competing at gaming conventions, or seeking medical treatment. We must continue to be defiant in the face of fear by enthusiastically participating in life. We must demand a world where it is safe for people to live their daily lives. A world where the weapons of war cannot be purchased at your local drugstore. A world where those with power cease to close their ears, ignoring all of our tears. Stop offering up empty words with a side of inaction while people continue to die. Stop giving in to the demands of the greedy. For you are sanctifying the hatred of the unhinged rather than acting that their deaths be avenged. For all of their sakes, we must demand peace, live peace, breathe peace, be peace. We can have a world free of bullets, but it's up to you to get it. the poem that I wrote for a Vallejo organization called Vallejo Soup, and I performed it at the Vallejo People's Garden. And what they do is kind of a crowdfunding thing where they have a potluck. It's called A Recipe for a Better World. Take a dash of love, a cup of cooperation, stir together with some unity, and invite the whole community. Multiple chefs don't spoil this soup. The more the merrier on this island of the mayor. So boldly we dare proclaim that together we can. Together we can build the world we want, raise one another up, hold one another, stand up for each other. Together we can. Together we can do so much more, be so much more, live so much more. The joy of this evening spent together dining in this people's garden rings out collectively as a shield against sorrow. Our support unites us with one another to make our community better, planting the seeds that will harvest a better tomorrow. Thank you very much. Yes.